In gadgets number 154, I promise an implementation of the HS-ACC platform, a 3D printable, two-plane, soft-bearing, dynamic bouncing machine. If you're up for a 3D slash electronic project, you got one here. Now the electronics are quite simple on this, but admittedly, there's quite a bit of 3D printing. So Trooper here could have wrecked havoc on all that printing, but he didn't. He was a really good boy. So he deserves a treat, I think. I don't know what's inside of these foils, but he'll jump pretty high for that. We got him from the shelter a few months ago. He's absolutely adorable. So let's take a closer look at all that printing that Trooper allowed me to do. Starting with the frame. So at 8 inch by 8 inch, the size was pretty much determined by the limits of the printer bed capacity, 220 millimeters by 220 millimeters. Followed by the pedestals, which are also bulky pieces to print. These will accept the V-blocks or the roller blocks. They are height adjustable to accommodate varying journal diameters. The threads of these number 10 machine screw nuts are pre-drilled prior to inserting the nuts in the PLA. Just the heat generated by the drilling process could possibly cause damage to the PLA, so make sure you pre-drill them before inserting them. They're very snug. These nuts are 365 thou across flats, and the piece was designed to accommodate them. The use of a machine screw can help bring those nuts in there, as well as in these suspension arms. Notice that there are two nuts wide on here. It's a bit tricky, but well worth it. There are many pivot points on this build, and this has proven to be a good low-cost solution to producing them. The double seal bearings used throughout the build are 608 double Z bearings. I used an 895 DC motor. The crown pulley here is keyless, so it's tapped on the shaft, fairly snug. Make sure that you support the back of the shaft here as you drive this on. And these belt idlers are adjustable along the track to accommodate varying diameters of rotors meant for either 9 millimeter or 10 millimeter wide belts. You should own a couple of lengths, anywhere between 800 centimeters to 1200 centimeters. From an electronics point of view, this project is quite simple. There are no SMD soldering involved. Just some straightforward soldering iron work that makes the connections between the ESP32 W Room 30 pin board to the RJ45s. And this small PCB helps make the connections between the ADXL 345 accelerometer and the RJ45 connector. So we end up with a couple of these. Notice how they're assembled. And they've been fully tested because they will be permanently epoxied into the pedestals. I wanted the accelerometer and the pedestal to be one. I could have used 5 minute epoxy but I ended up using this adhesive, E6000, that's really good shit. Very important, notice that one of these is pointing down and one of those is pointing up because once they face each other, I want these accelerometers to have the same polarity. If this one results in a plus, I want this one to also result in a plus. And it's the RJ45 pointing down that goes on the right plane. You guys have already seen this 20 volt DeWalt lithium battery interface before on the channel. Power from the battery goes through this 20 amp fuse prior to going to the switch. From the switch it goes to the small MP1584 buck converter that you see 
double adhesive to the bottom of the case. The output is set to 5 volt and plugs onto the PCB board. Also from the switch is the feed that will be the input side on the motor controller. Here's a final look at the main board which has been double adhesive to the bottom of the box with power, ground and single wires for the E18 IR sensor connected. And the RJ45 ports line up nicely with the window. I went with this ZK-MG motor controller. I like the price and I like the rotary dial and the easy input and output connections at the bottom. And here we have the control panel all bundled up. The wall powered. I've designed this test rotor with built-in intentional imbalance. So the next video is going to be a demo on the procedure to balance with this and its capabilities. So here's a spoiler alert. This balancing machine based on the HS-ACC platform using budget components is capable of ISO G2.5, a balance grade usually reserved for machines uh, tens of thousands of dollars. We'll catch you guys then.